In the previous video, we became familiar with the positivist paradigm. We addressed its ontological and epistemological viewpoints and also hinted at some fundamental problems. In this clip, we will formulate the critique in more detail and present a different outlook that will hopefully solve our problems. Positivism claims that reality is the collection of facts and that it exists independent of us. We call this outlook on our world, this ontology, empirical realism. Objective and absolute knowledge is gathered by making empirical observations and logical inferences. We call this theory of knowledge, this epistemology, objectivism. Moreover, the idea is that our knowledge bears a one-to-one -one correspondence to reality. This is called the correspondence theory of truth. We illustrated the positivistic paradigm with the game Mastermind, showing how we obtain knowledge by doing experiments, making empirical observations, and seeing our results either confirmed or falsified. But there are some very fundamental problems with this analogy. Let's take a closer look at these problems to help us realize to what extent positivism might be a somewhat naive depiction of how we can get to know our surrounding world. In Mastermind, the players are familiar with the basic building blocks of the game, the board, the pins, and the screen. In reality, we are not. In fact, we are ignorant of what the building blocks, the board, the pins, and the screen really look like. We can only make assumptions about them. In Mastermind, the players are familiar with the structure of the game. In fact, the game compels them to place a combination of four colored pins. In reality, we do not know what the order of the universe is, or if there's any order at all. In Mastermind, we can confirm our knowledge about the facts by removing the screen and directly accessing the fact itself. A similar mechanism seems absent in reality. There is no one or nothing to definitely confirm or falsify our knowledge. And lastly, we cannot even be certain if there is any master code to find at all. So all in all, it seems that we are never able to find the one true picture of reality. Some of the problems of the positivistic paradigm were addressed and led to the formulation of the critical rationalist approach. But we saw that Popper's falsificationist approach could not escape the objections that were brought forward against logical positivism. Let's now, from the perspective of the alternative interpretivist paradigm presented in this chapter, reconsider the issues we had with the mastermind analogy and let these be the basis for a new and hopefully better game. Imagine a game with players and materials. The rules are simple. The players themselves must determine the nature of the materials. The players must try to find an order in what is in front of them, but are given no clue whatsoever about the nature of the order or whether there is any order at all. The players must then try to represent this potential order and decide for themselves what this order means. Lastly, the players must then try to verify or falsify the representation by devising tests, but what method of testing they should use is entirely up to them. And, most frustratingly, there will never come an end to this game. What this alternative view shows us is that it is wrong to just assume that reality is something that exists independent of us. The rules for this alternative game make it clear that reality is actually constructed, at least in part, by us. Instead of a one-to-one -one correspondence between the external reality and our knowledge of it, this alternative approach relies on coherence of our knowledge claims as the most important criterion for truth. We will never know for sure whether the observational claims we make about the outside world are in complete accordance with the actual external reality. What we can rely on is making an internally consistent representation of reality. In other words, we form what is called a narrative of reality that seems correct. Any statements regarding reality made, say, by scientists should now be viewed within the context of this narrative and become part of the narrative when the whole remains consistent. This is called the coherence theory of truth. The big question is, of course, does the coherence theory of truth provide us with a solution to the problems we faced in using the correspondence theory of truth? At first glance, the answer seems to be yes. By letting ourselves be an integral part of reality, we have gotten rid of this notion that there should be some direct link between the knowledge within us and the facts outside of us. But we have also opened the door to new problems. For the coherence theory of truth may provide us with a consistent representation of reality that does not make it necessarily a true representation of reality. Moreover, it might be that we have more than one consistent representation of reality. Take the evolution versus creationism debate, for example. Two seemingly consistent, but contradictory, representations of reality. What makes matters worse, we don't even have a good method of comparing both narratives. 
they seem to be written in entirely different languages. But don't worry too much yet, because there may be a way out. <laughs>